I'm really excited to read from my new book, Daylight Has Already Come. And this is kind of a selected poem. So it's like a career spanning volume. And the work that I'm going to read tonight is from a collection called Dark Horse, which is collected in the Black Lawrence Press book. And so this first poem is called Facts About the Shore. The whole time we're speaking, your other wife traces figures in the sand. Little hourglass atop Rousseau's desk, logic and its raptures. How cold the light is as it strikes the coast. The insides of the flowers have gone dark and now their mouths are frozen shut. Dear impossibility, dear husband, this is your atoll. A low sky murmurs just above us and none of the ships will ever make it back to the dock. Snow falls on the other wife, on your small white boat, on the ice. When you look away from the ocean, I do my best to hold still. I try to ache more beautifully. Sad film with subtitles. The first scene was nearly untranslatable. Velocity and the little ache at the very back of the throat. Were we seeing a design in the narrative when all that was really there was the hand on the waist, the movement of a white dress in the middle distance? And for once they traveled to a country that spoke another language entirely without so much as a miniature dictionary to lessen the shock to lose that thread the moment the wind picks up, to no longer be able to trace the progress of an idea or the line that reason makes in the hot white sand was to somehow always be on holiday. Still, they both had to wonder what the gatekeeper thought of them, their mouths that empty, not even a cough, to break the silence. Sad film with emergency exit. The blue room is always dark, no matter who comes walking through the double doors, which is to say he couldn't even speak about their last meeting in French let alone pronounce her name properly. That night, nearly everything was keeping track of time. The bouquet on the table, the field just beyond the window, and of course, the snow. If only the, if only. According to the waitress, it was a teenage violinist from Neuer's who brought the coast an even costlier war. Gold buttons sewn one by one at the very back of her neck. Little Mary of the Cross, we know he really loved that girl. The cough and stutter. It is difficult to take either of them seriously when all of the other houses in the city are burning too. And so this next piece is called The Tears of Things. I thought you'd never ask about the flowers. You see, the gatekeeper's ardor has begun to fade. I trace sweetheart letters you've sent by post, count little stitches on the sleeve of a shirt. This is how I sharpen the needle. Then you cut the thread. Now the leave taking, the carte de visite, you're always cruelest when I arrive with gifts. So what do you like better, 
my dress or its shadow? What do you like better, the velvet box or the nothing inside? What I meant to say, the field is just a field. The snow is just snow. When I say your name, all the world goes out. And this next piece is called Goodnight Lyric. A clasped hand is rarely safe, especially in the spring. That day, everything in Rome was burning. The chapel, the little school in Trastevere, and the restaurant with its ostentatious display of carved ice. Now the long goodbye, the final exchange of gifts. Because their narrative is not specific to a particular year, it could belong to any of them. And so the young man fired a cannon to take his beloved back to the city, giving the Mediterranean its first real war. It is difficult to understand this gesture as politics since it reads like an epithalamian, but nothing in history is isolated. And some of us inevitably become pillars of the resistance. Are you reading the street signs? Those little pictures are monuments to chance. How frightening when their meaning emerges. The soldiers looking left begin to duck their heads. Orpheus really loved that girl. At night, to keep the wind out of the rooms, he would place loose pages from the book in the crevice, exactly like this. She waited for what seemed like hours, leaving her passport in a locked box at the hotel. Only weather breaking the silence. Always mourning or being mourned, it all seemed the same to her, traveling from one city to the next under a sky filled with sunless light. Why would anyone find the train schedules interesting when it is possible to learn about astronomy? What one fears most in the afterlife? It is the wind shattering each of the windows, what is nearly unsayable to friends, that little declaration that lodges at the back of her throat. And so this next piece is called Sad Film with Deadbolt. An empty house is only quiet when it's burning. The situation isn't unusual for you, but I can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. In Kant's aesthetics, beauty and terror are immutable qualities, the way a child is born with or without an aptitude for formal logic. It's difficult not to think of this inevitability as a kindness. To say we can watch a wisp of smoke rising from beneath someone else's door and not feel responsible for that startling numbness at the back of the neck. There's something I've been wanting to tell you. And even if I could, I'm not sure I'd be able to speak clearly enough. It's remarkable, really, how everyone else seems to have remembered the appointment, how even the smallest gesture becomes a monument to indecision. And so I'm just going to read one more. This is called Sad Film with Contingencies. Although he was always with her in the room, she insisted that some degree of space remain between them. 
For him, this little rupture was merely an opportunity, not a disturbance of any kind. Which is to say, there were a few things she didn't know. Their house was furnished with a small door, which opened into a meadow. She was nothing like the ocean, he insisted, the break in his voice when he lies. There was only a harbor with brown stones half hidden beneath the water like freckles. The danger of any open space is that it will instill a desire for proximity. The camera moving through the window and up into the rafters. She holds the cup and saucer in her hand. The sound of glass splintering, then a long shot of the house. What comes first? the beautiful girl or the loaded gun? Some questions aren't really questions. She agrees after a few weeks that more space is needed than just the room with its cracked table and display of family photographs. He unlocks the gate. Thank you so much.